it's Ama, and I am back with another video. And today's video actually comes from someone who left me a question in the comments section. That's why I always say I love when you guys leave me comments. Um, I read them all. I may not always have a chance to respond. This is a very busy time for me, like at work, so it's hard for me to respond to them all, but I do read them. And someone left this question in the comment section. So today's video is basically um, five reasons why the narcissist does not give you closure. Um, I've done a video before on um, getting closure with a narcissist, but now I really want to go into why they don't give you closure. So. Come along with me on this journey of healing and let's talk about this together. Okay, so today I really want to discuss the five main reasons why um, a narcissist does not give you closure. And I know that this is important for a lot of you, especially to, uh, depending on where you are in your healing process and your recovery. Um, sometimes the feel, uh, the feeling that you have for the need for closure is overwhelming, especially if you're somebody like me. I'm a communication junkie. Like I have to get it out. I need to talk about it. I need to talk through it. I need to find a resolution at the end of it. That's just the way that my mind works. That's the way that I'm used to communicating with people. So I found it very difficult to leave the relationship with the narcissist and have absolutely no closure. Okay, so number one, the first reason that the narcissist does not give you closure is they know that you need it. They know that you need it, okay? Um, this is their last attempt to withhold something from you that they know that you want, that they know that you need. If you think about your entire relationship with the narcissist, um, you know, they kind of vacillate between the love bombing where they're giving you more than enough of what you need uh, physically, psychologically, emotionally. Um, and then there are times where they give you nothing and they withhold, right? Where they're not giving you the attention, the time, the intimacy, right? So it's kind of like feast and famine with a narcissist, right? Feast where they're giving you everything and famine where you're really living off of the crumbs that the narcissist gives you in the relationship. And so they don't give closure because they know that you need it. And it's their last form of uh, withholding something from you that they know that you need. Uh, number two, the narcissist does not give you closure because in order for you to give closure to someone, you have to acknowledge wrongdoing. You have to acknowledge your part, the part you played in the relationship falling apart or the part that you played for the relationship to, to, to be in the condition that it's in. And a narcissist is never going to acknowledge what they've done wrong. And if they do, it's going to be so short lived. When I told the narcissist that, you know, he needed to come to my house and get his things and he tried to bring me into one last argument um he asked me he's like you know do you do you want to talk that was him future faking a, a closure discussion with me right so i'm thinking okay he he he's gonna he wants some closure so he do you want to talk he says do you want to talk and he says do you have anything to say i said well you know i just think it's kind of sad that that's all I got out. Well, and his response, well, I don't think anything is sad. You know, quite frankly, I, I'm doing great now. And, I'm, and I said, pause. I didn't finish my sentence. I said, I think that it's sad that there will be no acknowledgement from you as to how you've treated me in this relationship. And he goes, oh no, don't get me wrong. I know my issues. I know what I've done wrong. And I looked and I said, oh, really? 
and then immediately he flipped it on to me, right? I know what I've done wrong, but, 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 but you, you're a narcissist. You, you have no ability to be emotionally present. You have no ability to be emotionally available. So now he started the projection, okay? And so what I'm trying to tell you, and as he, when he started that, I just was like, peace out, dude. Have a good life, right? The last thing that I said to him before we parted ways, because he was trying to get me to take some responsibility in the relationship. And I said, you know what? I said, I can take responsibility. I said, because I need to find out what inside of me was so broken that I attracted a man like you. That was the last thing I've ever said to him. And I walked away. So you will not get closure with a narcissist because they cannot acknowledge wrongdoing in the relationship. They cannot take responsibility because that's the difference between a codependent and a narcissist. People say all the time, oh, if a codependent can heal, how come a narcissist can't heal? Well, I'll tell you why. Codependents have the ability for introspection. We have the ability to self-reflect. It may not feel good. Some of us may lie to ourselves until we really, really decide that we want to heal from this stuff. And then we get honest with ourselves. But we have the ability to look at ourselves. We have the ability to reflect on our behavior and to change it. The narcissist doesn't have the ability to reflect on their behavior. They don't have the ability to be introspective. And that's why they repeat the same cycle relationship after relationship. I say it all the time. It's a mental illness. All right. Number three, and I think this is probably most important. The reason that the narcissist does not give you closure is because they want to keep the door open for future hovers. Okay. If, if, if they don't acknowledge anything, they don't acknowledge wrongdoing and they don't acknowledge how they've hurt you and they don't acknowledge their role in all of this and they just kind of disappear, you're longing for that closure. And so when the phone rings or the text comes up three months later, six months later, a year later, you still have unfinished business. And so you answer the phone. Or you answer the text in an attempt to gain closure. And this is usually how they're able to rope you back into the relationship. Because, you know, if they've never said it, okay, you found the condoms, you saw the phone number, you, you, you might have even spoken with the woman or the man. But if they never admit to it, there's always a possibility that maybe it didn't happen. Right. And I've spoken before about our cognitive dissonance. Sometimes it has us so far off base from reality that if the narcissist never admits to the wrongdoing and they give you time to boil down and then they come back and they hover, it's an easy way for them to put their foot back in the door, nudge it wide open and rope you back into a relationship. So that's the third reason. Um, number four. They've convinced themselves that it's all your fault. Pretty much. They feel they don't need to give you closure because, listen, this is all your fault. You should know what, what went wrong. You should know the part you played. You should know that you were the evil person that, you know, the fact that they gave you so much and they love bombed you so much during the idealization phase and you had the nerve to speak up for yourself. And you had the nerve to have an original thought that differed from the narcissist. Well, they've convinced themselves that this is all your fault. And yet again, they take no responsibility for it. And so they don't think that you need closure because they don't believe that they need to answer to anyone. Okay, they have a superiority complex. And so they don't think that they need to come to you and explain themselves at all. Okay. And then number five, and this one hurts, but it's true. They've moved on. The new supply is in their life. They're idealizing that new supply. And they could really care less about you. Your yesterday's news, your old news, they've moved on. They're not thinking about you. 
So we talked about this before when I talked about in my video, when the narcissist moves on without you, um, and this being a part of their pathology, and this is why I say it's a mental illness, because while you're still grieving and trying to get over the narcissist, the narcissist is, the narcissist is in a full-blown relationship with someone else. Almost like you never existed, like poof. Like you have to go back and look at the pictures and, and, and say, did this really happen? Because the way that they move on and completely out of your life, it's almost like you never existed. It's almost like you didn't share the relationship that you shared. And so once the narcissist, because you have to keep this in mind, the narcissist has a storyline in their head. Okay? It's like a feature film. They have a storyline going in their head. And when your part doesn't work out in it, they need this storyline to continue. And they replace you very quickly and keep the storyline going. They keep the storyline going. Okay? So that's so important to understand. So I just wanted to give you the five main reasons why a narcissist does not give you closure. And like I said in that first video that I made about getting closure with a narcissist, you really have to get to a point where you accept the fact that you will not get closure from a narcissist and you stop seeking that external closure and you turn that within. And I'm telling you, the more research I did on NPD, the more research I did on codependency, and I started connecting the dots with myself and understanding how I ended up with the narcissist and things of that nature, I no longer needed closure from the narcissist. I just didn't. And I think that that kind of self-directed closure that I had was better than any conversation I could have ever had with the narcissist. Okay, so I urge you to, to take some time for yourself in this healing process to really understand what you've been through and to understand that it's not your fault. And when you begin to really research and understand this thing and understand narcissists and their pathology and how they live, you will then get the closure that you need because you'll never get it from the narcissist. So I want you to do three things for me at this time. Please like if you like this video so that more people can see it and have access to it. Share this video if you think that it can help someone. Um, comment below. I love, love, love the comments. I get a lot of my uh, video ideas from the comments. And also please hit the subscribe button Subscribe if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet. And if you have, I want to tell you thank you so much for supporting me uh, in this channel and my healing process. I will say it all the time. Um, I forgot who the quote is by, but the quote says, when feeling helpless, help someone. If you are feeling helpless, help someone. And that resonates with me so much, especially with narcissistic abuse, because when coming out of it, you feel helpless. You feel helpless. And I know that I did. And I started making these videos to help others. And it has given me such healing and joy. Even watching many of you go through your transformational journeys has given me such joy and, and peace and happiness with this situation. So I, I just want you to take that, um, that quote for yourself as well. When feeling helpless, help someone and it'll make you feel better. Um, uh, so again, thank you so much for taking this walk with me. It's Alma and until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.